Hello there, I'm Jimmy, president here at Modern Gaming. Let me be the first to welcome you to the future of gaming, where you're gonna have to pay an outrageous amount of money for a game that's barely half done. If that, where lifetime fan favorite features get completely cut, axed right from the game, in the garbage where they belong. And to top it all off, every game is riddled with problems and bugs that will take months if not years to fix individually. It's gonna be great. Wanna play co-op split screen with your friends? Too bad. Wanna play a brand new PvE experience based on your favorite PvP hero shooter? Guess what, buddy? Too bad. How about this? Wanna play Tarkov? But in Call of Duty? I know, it sounds great, but guess what? You can't play it. Not now, not ever. Maybe someday. How about in the meantime, you play some Warzone 2, a fan favorite battle royale? Well, guess what? You can't do that either. Here at Modern Gaming, we only care about one thing, and that's money. I love money. I love it. Now, what I originally wanted to do when I sat down to make this video was play and review the newest installment to the Call of Duty series, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Nope, not the one you're thinking of. I'm talking about the sequel to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Not that one, not Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. I'm talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare, you know, the one from 2019. So this is 2022's edition of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, not 2009. Get it? While playing the game, I ran into a very similar issue I had when I was sitting down to play and make a video about Overwatch 2. The game is pretty much identical to its predecessor. Aside from asinine UI changes, the Gunsmith 2.0, the camo system, a handful of new guns and all brand new maps, the game is basically the same as it was before. I mean, obviously it just sounds like I described a completely different game, but if you played the two games, not much has changed in three years. The games flow the same, they play the same, the engines are almost identical. To me personally, everything feels the same as it did in 2019. It feels like they just took that game, put some new maps, a few new guns, and called it a day. And of course, I'm only referring to the multiplayer. I haven't played the single player campaign or the Spec Ops, although based on how Spec Ops was in 2019, I'm probably not even gonna try that. Now, when the original Modern Warfare 2, you know, the one from 2009 that everybody knows and loves, came out, it definitely had some inspiration from its predecessor, Call of Duty 4, but it was a completely different game. I mean, sure, some of the guns had the same name and they brought back some throwback maps, but everything was pretty much brand new from the ground up. Sure, on a basic level, the features worked the same, but a lot of this stuff was changed drastically, both visually and how it actually worked. But when I did try to sit down and play the new Modern Warfare 2, I really did try to just play it, get some gameplay, get some thoughts going in my head, but it really just, it was boring. After only a few minutes of playing, I decided to call it quits and, you know, thought to myself, maybe I'll just try that new DMZ mode. It's basically, DMZ is like Tarkov, but on Call of Duty. Sounds great. Surely that's been released with the game. Surely I just paid $70 for a completely finished, fully released game. It's definitely in there, right? Right? Nope, not there. I don't know where it is. Is it even real? Is it, was it just a rumor? Did I just schizophrenically make up in my head that this game was coming with a brand new game mode? I have no idea. It's just not there. There's no word about it. I didn't hear anything about it. No articles. I don't know. I I don't know if it ever existed. At this point, I just decided to quit the game. Warzone 2 doesn't come out for, I think, another month, which I guess everybody kind of knew leading up to the release of Modern Warfare 2, but I just still can't wrap my head around why these game developers feel it's okay to release a completely unfinished game. I mean, sure, Modern Warfare 2 is the best one out of all the ones that have released lately, but if you look at Overwatch 2, but God, if you dare to take one look at Halo Infinite, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, they just... The game's still not done. It's been out for almost a year. Now, have game developers always been like this? Have they always just released half-assed, half-done work and just figured it out later? I guess to find out for sure, we're gonna have to take a trip to the past. The year is 2007. The first ever iPhone has just been announced. The final Harry Potter book has just been published. But most importantly, Halo 3 has just been released. On September 25th, 2007, the latest installment of the Halo series, Halo 3, released for Xbox 360. Upon release, excited gamers like myself had access to one of the most beautifully told and visually stunning stories ever to hit the shelves for Xbox 360. And the best part was, you can go at it alone or with up to four friends online or split screen. You hear that, 343? Split screen. Yeah, people like to play games at home sometimes with their friends, not just online. No. Along with the campaign, the game was released with one of the most competitive yet simultaneously fun to play multiplayer experiences to date, as well as a full forge mode where you could create literally anything using props and items from the Halo games, either for yourself to enjoy or for others to enjoy as a custom game. Wait, did I just say custom game? Because yes, this game also released with a full custom game system, one where you could create your own game mode for yourself to enjoy or to share with others, or you could download fun game modes from other members in the community, such as, and not limited to, Trash Compactor, 
Fat Man, Jenga, Duck Hunt, Monster Truck, and so much more. But wait! There's more! This game also released with a full theater mode where you could save and post clips for your friends or strangers to see on your Halo profile. Later down the road, they added multiple maps that continuously updated the multiplayer regularly with fresh new game modes, both fun and competitive, and the game's multiplayer had both a social and ranked leveling system. I know, crazy, right? The year is 2009. America is amidst its worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Pop music icon and possibly file, Michael Jackson has just passed away. But it wasn't all that bad because Modern Warfare 2 has just released. On November 10th, 2009, Modern Warfare 2, sequel to my favorite Call of Duty, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, released Changing Gaming forever. Everyone was playing this game, and I mean everyone. With the release of Modern Warfare 2, it basically jump-started the gaming community on YouTube with hit channels like Machinima Respawn and Birth Now, one of the most famous and most successful gaming orgs of all time, FaZe Clan. Modern Warfare 2 released with a full single-player campaign, a single-player or co-op experience called Spec Ops, and one of the greatest multiplayer Call of Duty experiences to date with a full leaderboard system, a full prestige system, and tons of great maps and great modes. The game would go on later to see DLC maps added to the game prior to the release of its successor, Call of Duty Black Ops 1. The year is 2016. The now hit show Stranger Things has just released its first season on Netflix. Donald Trump also became president. Yes, the guy from Home Alone. But also, a little game called Overwatch, an FPS game made by the Warcraft people, what do you want? has released. On May 24th, 2016, Overwatch released for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Overwatch was a brand new hero-based FPS game with over 20 unique playable heroes, 12 maps, and two game modes. It had a full overall ranked system that progressed just by playing the game. Not a battle pass, a ranking system. Paired with this was a full rank mode where you could play competitively to earn new ranks like gold, platinum, diamond, and so on. It also came with a full in-game store you could visit to purchase the likes of skins and emotes for real money, or alternatively, in-game currency you earned just from playing the game. Do you see what I'm getting at here? When Halo Infinite released initially, only the multiplayer was available. Yes, after being delayed for years and years, they only released the multiplayer. And not only that, but it was their brand new live service multiplayer experience. While fun at times, the multiplayer lacked any real leveling system besides the battle pass, which by the way, was three months long. You didn't hear me wrong. The battle pass was three months long. I had friends that completed it in two weeks. What? I mean, sure, for casuals like me, maybe that's great. I could spend the next three months leveling up in Halo, but for the average player, and for anybody who took the game anywhere near seriously, that was an incredibly long amount of time to be stuck at max level with nothing new to do. But yes, that was three months with no new content besides lackluster events and store updates. Can't forget those store updates. And not only that, but the game was riddled with bugs and problems. For example, the iconic and my favorite game mode, Big Team Battle, was completely unplayable for the entire first month of the game. Possibly longer. I stopped following it. I know it at least went on for a month. The skill-based matchmaking region multiplayer system made it nearly impossible for any mid-level or high elo players to find any matches whatsoever in social games. There's also desync, which I'm 90% sure still has not been fixed, and custom games. Hello? 343, you awake in there? Are you okay? Basically, what I'm trying to say is the game is still very broken. Alongside the broken multiplayer, the game later released its campaign not too long after the initial release. It's mediocre at best, in my opinion. Some people enjoy it, some people don't. I think it's somewhere in the middle. The open world aspect is okay, but there's really a lot of boring, repetitive objectives, and the main missions are pretty repetitive at times too. It just didn't feel like the Halo I grew up playing. I grew up playing Halo 1 Combat Evolved on the PC, Halo 2 on the Xbox original, and Halo 3 on the Xbox 360, as well as all the games after that. And while some of them, Halo 5, weren't that great when it came to the single player experience, I still enjoyed them, but this just, it didn't feel like Halo. Along with this, they announced that Forge and Co-op would both be delayed for another six months at bare minimum. Six months. Without two major fan favorite modes in the game. Six months. Not there. And when Co-op eventually released, they announced that it would be online only, no split screen. Split screen was one of those things that made Halo Halo. Sure, not everybody plays split screen games nowadays. Even back then, I didn't play any game split screen besides Halo. It was just one of those games that was fun to sit down on your couch and play with your friends or your cousins or your brother or sister or parents. It was just fun. It was a fun game to sit there and just grind out the campaign with your friends sitting next to you. In my opinion, it was just an essential part of the Halo experience. Now, if you jump ahead to the release of Overwatch 2, 
it was more of the same nonsense. PvE has been delayed until possibly the end of 2023, and the multiplayer, don't get me started on the multiplayer. They reused every hero from the first Overwatch game with the exception of two new heroes, which I did expect, but also every map. With only two new maps in the game, both of which are okay, but tied to the new game mode, which in my opinion is just awful, if I'm being honest, it kind of makes me hate the new maps too. Not only that, but they scrapped the leveling system, the metal system, loot boxes, and switched the gameplay from 6v6 to 5v5, which actually I see as a positive. I think the game plays much better 5v5, and they should have done that right from the get-go. Oh, but of course, how could we forget the Battle Pass? The Battle Pass, which contains essentially nothing besides voice lines and some new skins that are pretty okay. Is it worth the $20? I'll leave that up to you. In my opinion, it wasn't. And while we're talking about skins and voice lines, remember those things that were purchasable with in-game currency that you actually earned just from playing the game, just from playing, you know, the roles that nobody else wanted to play or playing your, your daily challenges or daily matches, whatever. You just earn that currency casually. You could also get it from loot boxes. But in Overwatch 2, no, 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 you can't. You now have to use your real hard-earned money to purchase skins for the game. And yes, that's both for the old skins and the new skins. But I gotta be honest, most of the skins are the ones from the first game. Now, technically, you could use in-game currency to purchase these skins. The problem with that is that the only way you can earn the Overwatch coins is by grinding out daily and weekly challenges. The problem with that is you can only earn about I don't even think a hundred coins from a week's worth of challenges. Somebody did the math and it would take like 300 and something years to purchase all of the legendary skins in the game. That is insane. I'm not saying you can't make it more appetizing to spend your real money rather than grind out challenges in the game. Plenty of games do that. But I think to make it impossible to get all the skins is a lot different than making it harder just by playing the game. The purchasing options should make it quicker, yes, and for people who have the money and want to just unlock the stuff, sure, just spend your money. But for people who can't afford it or choose not to spend money on these games, there should be a viable way for them to unlock all the same things, if that's the system you're going to implement. Now, with all that being said, the classically fun Overwatch gameplay is still there, but everything else has gone to shit. Finally, we reach what for me was the nail in the coffin, but also, again, the best of these three games. Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2, although many may not see it this way, released incomplete. Many may not see it that way because we've been conditioned to accept these half done or three quarters done or a, sometimes even a quarter done games. Plain and simple, the game is just not finished, which is what all three of these games have in common. There's no leaderboards or combat record. There's no theater mode. Again, I don't know why that feature has been taken out of this game. It was great in whatever Call of Duty it was in like 10 years ago. Why not keep doing it? There's no prestiges. Well, there's prestiges, but they're they're not regular prestiges. They're seasonal prestiges that you have to grind out the battle pass, either free or paid, to unlock new levels and get to max level just to be reset again at the end of the season. And for yet another year, they've refused to put in map voting or continuous lobbies back into the game. Again, I don't know why these features were taken out of the game. If you didn't want to be in a match anymore, you used to be able to just back out. Now this game's like, oh, it's okay, buddy. You lost. You, you can try again next match with a fresh lobby of people. But the people who did good, it was like, hey, I wouldn't mind doing that again. That was pretty fun. But oh no, I'm putting a lobby with sweats now because of skill-based matchmaking. This is not very fun at all. Now, in regards to a couple of things I mentioned, the UI uh, is apparently being changed, which I think is great. It shouldn't have been changed in the first place. I think the UI in the previous three games has been completely fine. I don't know why they felt the need to make it look like Hulu, but that's beyond me. And also the seasonal procedures are coming, but again, both of these things are tied to season one, which is I think over a month away still, or somewhere around a month away, which means if you're at max level already, which a lot of people are, I'm almost there myself and I've barely been playing. There's nothing else for you to do. You've unlocked everything. Maybe you can grind camo challenges if you're into that. Uh, you can grind out some of the other challenges. I don't know, but there's really no level content. That's why I miss the old prestiges where you can grind out the new prestige emblems and just trying to get to the max prestige before all your friends. Now, sure, maybe we knew Warzone 2 wasn't going to be available at release and hell, maybe even people knew that DMZ wasn't going to be available. Maybe I'm just dumb, but that's not the point. The point is every game developer nowadays feels that it's perfectly fine, A-OK, -okay, to release games that aren't finished. With the exception of a few like FromSoft with Elden Ring, which in my opinion is a great game that released full and they did some bug fixes and now the game's great but the problem with this model is that it doesn't make them any money because almost every game company i just mentioned plus a lot more both big and small releases their games half done full of problems but accompanied with a fully functioning and egregious microtransaction system because if you've noticed all these games i mentioned and a lot more their battle pass system their store system 
works great. But the rest of the game is in shambles. Long gone are the days of AAA releases that are just finished minus some patches and updates that need to be done. Now we are in the age of modern gaming. An era of gaming leaving most gamers like myself feeling pretty disappointed and just bored. But you know what? There are some people who almost enjoy the Battle Pass grind. They enjoy buying the latest and greatest skins to show off to all their friends. And they are okay with legacy features as DICE called them. Don't think I forgot about you. Nobody forgot about Battlefield 2042 because you're the worst of all these. All these games I just mentioned, you're worse than all of them. Maybe not Halo at this point, but you're pretty bad. What in oblivion is that? I don't think anything else needs to be said, does it? The legacy features that DICE referred to were such as leaderboards, text chat, and voice chat just not existing. You know, in Battlefield 2042, a, I'm sorry, I know I said I wasn't going to say it, but I have to. In a squad-based FPS team shooter game, there's no need for voice chat or text chat. Nope, that, that, makes, that makes total sense, right? I'm just crazy. Listen. All I'm trying to say is, when it comes to multiplayer experiences like Halo or Call of Duty or Overwatch or hell, even Battlefield, I miss when there was a noticeable effort in pleasing the community and just making a good game. Nowadays, most game developers are pretty much just solely focused on pleasing their, you know, multi-billion dollar company overlords like Microsoft or Activision, which are about to become the same company, which is absolutely insane. And listen, I can't even blame the game developers sometimes. I feel like there are a lot of people at 343 and at, you know, Infinity War and all these other companies, Blizzard, that genuinely do want to make a fun, great game for their people to enjoy. But they are very pressured and on strict deadlines to make X amount of money by X amount of you know time. It's probably a hell to work for one of those companies. I acknowledge that, but I'm still just saying that I miss when things were different. Is it so much for somebody to ask for a $60 game to come out that's just done? Not paying $70? Because first of all, when did it change to $70? Gotham Knights was $70. Call of Duty was $70. Listen, I know it's an extra $10. But it makes a difference and paying $70 for a game that's just not done yet is pretty aggravating. What are you insane? You're living in the past old man. Get with the times. Again, I can't say this enough. Here at Modern Gaming, we only care about one thing. It's not the fans. It's not making a good game. We only care about one thing. I'll give you a hint. It's in your wallet. Oh wait, it's probably not because it's in mine. <laughs> so please keep buying our games because you know, I just love money. Everybody loves money. Who wouldn't want a little bit of money? Keep buying them. Even though they're not done, who cares? Just spend your money, please. All right, Mr. Modern Gaming, settle down. I get it, I get it. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm fully aware that this structure of releasing games early, unfinished, and then fixing them later is not going anywhere. It's just not. This is what makes them the most money. This is what keeps you on the game the longest. The promise of bug fixes and new things in the store and new maps and new guns and new whatever, new characters. This is what keeps you playing these games. These games are designed to be addictive and to keep you playing them for as long as possible and spending as much money as possible. And don't even get me started on this like smaller indie game company early access shit because it's basically the same thing as I just described, except they never finish the game. It's literally just, hey, this game's in early access because we didn't finish it and we want you to buy it for 20 or 30 dollars if it doesn't work sorry listen i understand how business works this is clearly what makes them the most amount of money and i can't blame them in that respect but as somebody who has enjoyed playing video games his whole life it is truly depressing to see time after time these classics just be drug through the dirt because they want to make money off of them. It's just sad. It really is. But again, I get it from a business perspective. They know that if they drag at our heartstrings, look, look, new Halo game, look, new Call of Duty, look, another Overwatch game, and they just shove a bunch of microtransactions in it. They know you're going to, even people like me are going to sit down and pay money. I, I just spent $70 to buy Call of Duty, and I'm probably not going to play it longer than a month. Like, they know they're going to get people with this shit. I think I'm just basically trying to say that I just miss how things used to be. I miss paying $60, getting a complete game, and sitting down, playing it, then putting it on the shelf until I get to play it again somewhere down the road. But when it comes to multiplayer games, I wish having a regular leveling system where I could just grind out levels and camos, and maybe some of that stuff's still there, but not all of it is. And the stuff that's gone is what I miss the most. But again, I think this structure of releasing and, and how these games are designed is here to stay. All that being said, the one thing I can say with 100% certainty is that all of this is Fortnite's fault.